In today's digital world, one pair transforms the simple pixels on your screen into stunning, interactive websites. And that pair is HTML and CSS. In today's video, you'll be learning the fundamentals of HTML, where by the end of it, you'll use your new skills to start recreating the home page of the most iconic website in the world, Google. So let's get started. In my last video, I gave you guys a high overview of web development where we talked about the front end and the back end. And I also helped you guys set up your IDE where at the end of the video, we had our first website. And if you haven't watched that video, I strongly recommend you to check it out. Anyways, before we get started, make sure you have VS Code downloaded and also the live server extension. Since this extension will make our lives so much easier since it automatically updates our website whenever we make changes to our code. I'll leave the download link for VS Code down in the description. Okay, now let's get started. Just like in the last video, we're going to create a folder and this time we're going to name this folder Google underscore homepage. Open that folder in VS Code and then in that folder, create a new file called index.html. And like I said in the last video, make sure it's index.html. If it's anything else, it's not going to work. The reason we name it index.html is because when the browser accesses a website, it needs a starting point. So it needs a file that it needs to load first. And that file as well, index.html. It's the default file name that browsers look for. So whenever you go on google.com it's actually searching for google.com slash index.html so what happens if we don't have an index.html file so if we don't have this file when the browser sends a request to access it and it doesn't get anything the browser is either going to display an error or it's going to show a list of all the files in that current directory or it's just going to use a backup file which is where something like 404 comes in yeah so the more you know anyways let's go back to the index.html file so in that file, type exclamation point, and then you'll see two autocomplete suggestions. Pick the first one, and then now you'll see this file all filled out. What you're looking at now is HTML. HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language. It defines the structure and content of our web pages. So on websites, when you see the text, the images, and videos, that's all HTML. Okay, so going back to the index.html file, let me explain what we have so far. Okay, so the first part that says doc type HTML, all that's doing is letting the web browser know what version of HTML we're using. As of right now, the latest version is HTML5. Now, underneath that, we have the HTML element. It's also known as the root element of the HTML document. And all that means is that every other element that's inside of this HTML document will be a descendant slash child of it. As for the part that says lang equals en right next to it, that stands for language. And all that's doing is letting the web browser know, well, what language this web page is going to be. And this helps the accessibility for our websites because it helps technologies like screen readers. The next element we have is the head element. This is where we put important metadata about our web page. And all that means is just important stuff that we'll need for our web page to render correctly in the browser. That's why you see those two meta elements underneath it. That first meta element that says car set, that's our character encoding. And this is important because we need to make sure that our web page will display special symbols and characters from different languages. The last meta element helps us display our web page correctly so that it doesn't look all ugly on different devices. Now, the last element we have here is the title element. And this is what gets displayed on browser tabs. There's a lot of other things that we can put inside of this head element, but we'll talk about that later. And last but not least is the body element. This is the area where we'll display all our content for our web page. So all our text, all our images, all our videos will be inside of this body element. All right, now that we're done with that, let's actually start writing some HTML. Press the go live button in the bottom right of VS Code to actually open up your website. And currently it's just a white page. So let's change that. Inside the body element, I want you to type whatever you want. And once you're done, I want you to save the file with control S or command S. And if you notice, right as you saved, this actually updated our website. And that's because of our live server extension. Let's make our text a little bit more fancy. We're gonna transform our text into an H1 element. Now, this whole time I've been saying tags and elements, but you're probably wondering what that is. Almost all HTML elements are comprised of three pieces. The opening tag, the content, and then the closing tag. Opening tags tell the browser, this is the start of an HTML element. They're comprised of a keyword that's enclosed in angle brackets. Closing tags tell the browser where an element ends. They're almost the same as opening tags where the only difference is that they have a forward slash before the keyword. And between the opening tag and the closing tag is the content of the element. You can think of HTML elements as containers for content since the opening and closing tags tell the browser what content 
the element contains. And the browser can use that information to determine how it should interpret and format the content. So knowing that, let's create our H1 tag. The H stands for heading. So first, the opening tag, we put H1 in angle brackets, and then we put the content inside, and now we put the closing tag. Now save the file again, and now our text is a little bit more fancy. HTML has a lot of tags that exist, and it's important to understand when to use the correct tag for two main reasons. The first reason is SEO, or search engine optimization. And this is simply just making your website better for search engines like Google, Yahoo, Bing, and all that stuff. The second reason, once again, is accessibility, since some HTML tags help technologies like screen readers. And this whole area of optimizing the tags you use is called semantic HTML. If you want me to make a video on that, let me know. But for now, the basic HTML tags that only contain text that I recommend you know, since you usually see these a lot, are headings, paragraphs, spans, and lists. You'll usually see these ones a lot when it comes to text. So now that you know that, let's start customizing this web page a little bit more. Now, I want to make a new section in our web page just underneath our H1 tag. And the common way that we do this is the div tag. The div tag stands for division. And this tag is very important for you guys to know. I recommend you guys get real comfortable with this one. So let's create our empty div, our opening tag, and now our closing tag. All right, now in this section, I'm gonna cover some more special HTML elements. The first one is a button. So inside our empty div element, let's add our button. Opening tag, button, closing tag. And inside of it, just write, click me. And this is pretty straightforward. The button is just a clickable button. It's pretty obvious why this one's important. Now, the next thing is adding links to our web page. Links send us to other HTML pages on the web, which is why it's called the web. Now, to add a link in our web page, we're going to use the anchor tag. Now, underneath the button, opening tag, anchor, closing tag, and in between them, add whatever you want. Once again, save the page. Right now, the link doesn't do anything because we haven't told it where to go. So, we can do this using an HTML attribute. HTML attributes give more information to our elements, and we always add these attributes in the opening tag. Attributes are usually just two parts, the name of the attribute and a value, but not all attributes need a value. For our situation, we need to add an href attribute to our anchor tag, and that stands for hyperlink reference, and the value for this attribute is wherever we want it to link to. So in your href attribute, just add whatever value you want to give it, just copy and paste a random URL, save the page again, and now click your link. You can also link videos, PDFs, images and other stuff but for the most part you'll mainly be linking to other web pages now if you wanted to open this in a new tab we just add another html attribute called target and it's going to have the value of underscore blank now i also have this rel attribute but i want you to do your own research for that one generally there's two different types of links for this the first one is linking to pages on other websites on the internet and the second one is linking to pages on our own website when we link to pages on other websites on the internet that's called absolute links i used an absolute link for my href value and you probably did too. Absolute links consist of these parts, the protocol, the domain, and the path. An absolute link will always contain the protocol and domain of the destination. As for relative links, those are links to pages within our own website. The main difference between relative links and absolute links is that relative links don't need to include the domain name. And this is because the web browser is smart enough to know that if this is a page on the same website, then the domain name is going to be the same. So the way we link both pages together is we instead use the file path. Let's actually create create a relative link right now. So first we need to create a new page. So inside the folder, create another file and we'll call this one about.html. And just like the other page, type exclamation point, pick the first option to autocomplete and inside the body, we're gonna create an H1 element and inside of it, we'll write about. Now save everything once again, go back to the index.html file and we're gonna create another anchor tag. So underneath the first anchor tag, let's create a new one. And this time we'll call this one to about page. Now here's where the difference is. For our href attribute, the value is going to be the HTML file we just made. So for our value here, we're going to write about.html. Now save the file and click our new link and it should send you to our about page. Now this works because the index and the about page are in the same directory. This is why we can just use about.html as the value. But with bigger projects, we want to organize our files a bit better. So let's organize our files and let's make this a bit more practical. Okay, so usually we'll leave index.html where it's at in the root directory, but now we're going to create another directory just for our other pages. So create another folder and name that pages and then move the about.html file inside of pages. Now save your changes. And then if you've noticed, we actually broke our relative link and that's because this about.html is in a new location. So now
now we have to update our anchor tag to now pages slash about.html. Now this is the reason why it's called a relative link since the location is relative to the file that we're currently on. Now with the way we wrote this relative link, most times it's gonna work, but sometimes we can still run into some unexpected issues. So a better way of doing this is instead of just pages, we're gonna add a period and a slash before pages. So it's gonna be dot slash pages slash about.html. And the reason this is better is adding this period and slash we're telling the code that it should look for the file relative to the current directory that we're on. Okay, so that's mainly everything you need to know about links. Let's start talking about images. Okay, so in order to display an image in HTML, we use the image tag. Now, remember how I said almost all HTML elements have three parts? Well, image elements don't need a closing tag. And for HTML elements that don't need a closing tag, those are called self-closing elements. So in order to make an image element, all we do is just angle brackets, image, and that's it. And since image elements can't have a closing tag, then we can't put content inside of it. So it only has an opening tag. Now adding an image is pretty similar to links where we use an HTML attribute to give it the information. For an image, we use the source attribute. Images also use absolute links and relative links where we have two ways of doing it. Either one, we just link an image from another website or two, we provide the image from our own website. So it's the same thing as links. So if you have an image you wanna use from another website, copy and paste the image URL into the value for our source attribute. And if you wanna do it the relative way, then create an image folder to stay organized, download an image, move that image into the image folder. And then for the source value, it's gonna be the path to the image. Now, the last thing about images is the all attribute. The all attribute is used to describe an image. So it's gonna be used whenever an image can't be loaded. And it's also for accessibility. So for people with screen readers, it's gonna describe the image instead. Okay, so that's mainly everything that you need to know about images. So let's talk about the last HTML elements that you'll usually see. And those elements are forms and inputs. Forms let us send information to servers. So we can send information like our usernames and passwords, what we want to search up on Google and all that stuff. And inputs are the actual elements that we type into and select. And if you really want to be a good web developer, there's also labels and these describe the inputs. They make the forms more accessible and user friendly. Let's create a really simple form real quick. Okay, so underneath the image, we're going to do the following create our form element. So opening tag, form, closing tag. Inside of our form, we're gonna add our label, opening tag, label, closing tag, and inside of it, type search. And underneath our label, we're gonna make our input element. And just like images, inputs are self-closing. So all we need is an opening tag. So opening tag, input, and we're done. And last but not least, we need a submit button. So underneath the input, we're just gonna create a button. So opening tag, button, closing tag, and inside of it, we'll just say search. And now to fully finish the form, I'm gonna add some attributes. And I want you guys to research what they're doing since I want you to get into the habit of just researching things you don't know. But some of these attributes are pretty intuitive. So you probably know what they're doing. Now that's all you need to know about forms and inputs for now because we'll come back to these later on since they do become very important. All right, now let's talk about one more thing. If you've noticed so far, we indent any elements that are inside other elements and this is known as nesting. When we nest our elements, we create what's known as a parent and child relationship between them where the nested elements are the children and the element that they are nested within is the parent. Okay, so that was the fundamentals of HTML. I covered all the elements that you'll most likely see, but if you wanna dive deeper or you're still feeling a bit lost, I'll leave some resources in the description. But now you should also be able to just Google any questions that you have or just, you know, get ChatGPT to do all your work. So now let's start actually making Google's homepage. I'm going to go through this like how I usually think just to get you an idea of what it's like creating something. So first things first, let's look at the homepage. If you notice on Google's homepage, there's three main sections, the top, the middle and the bottom. And if you really want to be specific, we have the header, the body and the footer. So this means we need three sections in our web page. So I'm going to get started by making three empty divs, one for each section. So let's look at the top area right now. So looking at the top, we have about, store, Gmail, images, and then two icons. We'll worry about the icons later. For now, let's just do the text. And each of these text elements seem to be links. So this means we have to use anchor tags. So inside of this first div, let's just create four anchor tags. Now the next thing is the href attribute. So I'm just going to copy and paste where these links take us. But if you notice, two of them are on the left and the other two are on the right. 
so that means there's two different sections. So we'll use two div elements to represent the left side and the right side. Now put the anchor elements inside the proper divs. Okay, now for the last two elements, the icons. These are images, so really we can just find random images on the internet and just use them. And these images are on the right side, so we're gonna put these in the right div. Now underneath the anchor elements, we're gonna put two image elements. And for the source attribute, just find any images that fit what you want. And for the profile picture, you can really use whatever you want. All right, now we finished everything for the top half. Let's move on to the middle. Looking at the middle, there's two main parts, the Google logo and then the search bar. So this means there's gonna be two sections for this, one for the logo and one for the search bar. So in the div for our middle section, you're gonna create two elements, an image for the logo and a form for the search bar. You can use whatever source value you want for this logo since at the end of the day, it's your code. But if you wanna be perfect, you can just use a random Google logo online. So let's look at the form now. We'll worry about the icons later, but for now, we see that there's an input and two buttons. So inside our form element, we're gonna create an input and then two buttons. Bonus points if you add a label to the input. Now for the icons, you can just once again find them online. And since there's three icons, make three image elements. Okay, so that's everything for the middle section. Let's move on to the bottom now. Now, as you can see, there's seven links. So that means seven anchor tags. So inside our div element for the bottom section, let's just create seven anchor elements. Now for the href attribute, you can do whatever you want. Once again, I'm just gonna use where the links take us on Google's homepage. Now, if we look closer at the bottom section, there's also three main parts, the left, the middle, and the right. So that means we have to make three divs for each section. So create the three divs and then move the anchor tags in the right area. So three anchor tags should be at the top, one anchor tag should be in the middle, and the other three should be at the bottom. And there we go. We technically made Google's homepage. <laughs> now there's definitely some improvements we can make in the structure, but I'll let you guys figure that out. Now, even though it doesn't look like Google's homepage, technically it is. It's just missing the styles from CSS and we'll cover that in the next video. So until then, practice your HTML, look at the resources I left and see you in the next video.